kill cell is a device where you take liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen, we combine them, we get electrical power and water. This is our major source of electricity. Our mission rules stated that if you lose just one fuel cell, the landing on the moon is off. But one fuel cell alone will comfortably get you around the moon with enough electrical power to get you back to the Earth for a safe landing. So at that juncture, we thought, you know, we were highly uh, uh, disappointed. Not so much not worried about getting back, but because we couldn't land on the moon. Then I drifted. I drifted over to the center of the spacecraft and I looked up at the instrument panel. My eyes happened to focus on the instruments that told me the condition of two huge liquid oxygen tanks stored away in the back end of my spacecraft. When I glanced at the quantity gauge of one of those tanks, the needle read zero. And when I quickly glanced to the quantity gauge of the second tank, I could see the needle go down ever so slightly, but something you would never see in the normal use of the oxygen on a flight to the moon. That's when that old lead weight went down to the bottom of my stomach. You know that searing sensation you get when you're in deep trouble and you don't quite know how to get out of it? And then I drifted past my over to the left side, went out the window, and I saw escaping at a high rate of speed a gaseous substance from the rear end of the spacecraft. And it didn't take much intelligence on my part to realize the gas escaping and the needle on my second and last oxygen tank quantity gauge were one and the same. And very shortly, we'd be completely out of oxygen. And when that occurred, because we used oxygen to produce electricity, the third fuel cell would die, we'd lose all of electrical power. And when that occurred, because we controlled and gimbled our rocket engine by means of electrical power, we'd lose the entire propulsion system. We were in serious, serious trouble. We had inside the spacecraft a small battery, a small oxygen tank, merely to be used for the final plunge through the Earth's atmosphere for the final landing. But at the time this explosion occurred, we were some 200,000 miles from Earth. We were 90 hours from Earth because we had to go around the moon to get back home safely. We were going the wrong direction to, to, uh, to begin. Believe it or not, when I first reported it to Mission Control, they didn't quite believe what I was saying. They thought at first that perhaps the instruments that they were reading, which is the same that we had in the spacecraft, and are, are fed the information by means of telemetry coming down from the spacecraft, had been interrupted by a solar flare or something like that. You know, they said, we, we, we build a redundancy here. We build a duplication. You don't need, you know, three uh, fuel cells, two oxygen tanks, computer going off the line, loss of communication for a little bit all at once. It can't be that. It has to be just a communication problem inside the spacecraft. We knew what was going on. By the time the ground also came to the conclusion that perhaps something is really wrong, Hayes and I had met at that tunnel, climbed our way into the lunar module to see if we could somehow, some way, use it as a lifeboat to get home. I have to tell you a little bit about that lunar module. It's a very fragile device, never designed to come back home again. No heat shield. Skin so thin that if you so desired, you could take your fist and punch a whole way through it. Designed to last only 45 hours. Once you get into lunar orbit, then you power it up. Two people get inside, detach, go down, land, explore, take off, rendezvous, dock, throw the vehicle away. Designed to only support two people. And after the explosion, I just kept counting that crew. Let's see, there's one, there's two, there's three. I knew we were in serious trouble. When we got in the lunar module, and we forgot how long it was going to last, we turned on all the systems so that we could get everything started. We'd use batteries, not, uh, not fuel cells. And everything was going away, and everything was fine. And finally, the ground said, we don't know exactly what's wrong just yet, but we think it's wise 
that we get you back on that free return course. And they said, of course, now that we see everything is dead in the command module, and it was oxygen gone, electrical power gone, pulsing system no good. And he said, you're going to have to use the lunar module as your maneuvering vehicle. And I already knew that, and I was going to use the landing engine, the one we normally would land with, as the propulsion system. So they said, okay, we're going to try to get you back in that course again, so here's the attitude we want you to maneuver to. I had all the things set up. When I started to maneuver, I learned something that I took with me from the public sector in space into the private sector of, of business. Always expect the unexpected. In your companies, when the profits are up and the product